Okay, so yeah, this is this is um, as I said. I mean, the, the, the idea in this uh, in this work was to try to apply uh, in painting techniques uh, on uh, um, non Gaussian emissions. And usually, non Gaussian emission in in case of I mean, applied for for CMB, which is, which is a Gaussian field, are uh, um, astrophysical emission. And um, uh, in particular, the 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 the, the, the the enemy that we have to, that we, have, we are fighting, we have been fighting since a while now, is this uh, is the galactic emission, both coming from dust and synchrotron. But yeah, let's go. I mean, so you know, the cosmic microwave background, the CMB, is uh, shows anisotropies both in, in temperature, intensity, uh, in radio astronomy, the two are the thing, same thing, uh, kinda. <laughs> and um, and then in polarization uh, and in polarization the, the, there are two uh, way of decompose the, the linear polarization in uh, the e mode pattern that is the uh, is the, um, the, the the bottom the, the central panel in this figure uh, and so it's a sort of uh, um, um, curlless uh, um, uh, field vector field. And um, whereas the, the, the divergenceless uh, field, uh, we have like a, a magnetic field. I mean, the, the, the pattern is look, looks like the magnetic field, and it's called uh, for this the B uh, mode field. And so it's and it's in the one in the bottom panel. So you see that uh, the, the range of amplitudes for these anisotropies uh, it's uh, uh, essentially. Uh, it's decreasing, I mean, going from temperature to the B modes, and in particular, so the B modes are expected in uh, at the range of, uh, in the degree scale, and in, at the range of uh, 0.3 microkelvin. Um, yeah, so, let's see if I, okay. So, so what, what are, what are the, the, the seeds uh, generating this, uh, this uh, uh, fluctuation, these anisotropies? Essentially, is related. You can directly link these anisotropies to the to the quantum uh, field theory, so quantum fluctuation um, I, at the time of inflation. In particular, you see the formula in the bottom of these slides uh, that the amplitude of the, the, the V modes, in particular, that, that, that are uh, solely generated uh, in, the, in the degree angular scales by tensorial fluctuations. So you can define the amplitude by uh, respect to the scalar anisotropies that are essentially the one uh, that couple with the matter fluctuations. Uh, so the, 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 two, um, the two perturbations, I mean, the, the ratio of these two perturbations, uh, it's directly linked to the, the, energy, the energy scale of inflation. So, uh, the, the, so far, upper limits have been uh, set to for, for uh, R, for the tensor to scalar ratio and by bicep uh, uh, keck collaboration. So these are the latest values, so are below 0 0.07. And in, uh, at the smaller angular scales, let's say at the Archimedean scale, there are also E modes that are distort into um, uh, B modes via gravitational lensing of intervening matter along their journey and towards us. So this is uh, another uh, another source of V modes, but they is, uh, essentially are uh, on a different angular scale, and uh, so you can definitely disentangle the two. Um, in in a, I mean, in, if you if you essentially plan to observe a different angular scale, so there are ways also to uh, approach the lens in V modes, and uh, so the scale the, the the state of art for this um, for the the power spectra, so the the power spectra of angular anisotropies is that. Uh, temperature and uh, anisotropies have been very well uh, assessed, and actually, you see the fit. It's in uh, in the uh, um, in the in the left panel. Is the is the is the, the are the Planck data? I mean, in uh, uh, and the, the the angular power spectrum is the solid blue. Uh, and actually, the, the 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 shaded area in green is the the is the is the, is the cosmic variance is how. Uh, the fact that we have just one universe, and so it's the, the uncertainties are of the model of the of the theoretical uncertainties per se. And uh, in the right panel, you see the E modes um, power spectrum. So you see there are larger error bars, but it's essentially very well established. Um, so scalars, in a certain sense, have been very well constrained. Um, but B modes uh, so far 
uh, we, uh, as I said, uh, lensing beams have been uh, detected. And so you see it's the peak here around the, the L of thousand square uh, uh, scale. But yeah, as I said, there is no, there is no detection on the, on the, on the primordial beams that are expected to peak at around L of V of 100. So here, um, it's, uh, they are, uh, so far, essentially, they are, you, you, the solid line that you see here is just uh, the, the expectation from the lens in beams. So it may, well be, it may well be that they are uh, less than, uh, than the, 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 essentially, the, 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 solid, the, the, the amplitude of the lens in beams. Uh, and so the, the, the effort for the current experiment, for the forthcoming uh, experiments, is to uh, increase the sensitivity, so to reduce the error bars, and um, in, in, in the, on the one sense and the other sense to, uh, um, to assess better the, the, the effect of the galaxy, the galactic signal that can um, uh, mimic the B modes and so uh, mislead our measurements. So there are two directions in a, in a sense. So improving the sensitivity and, uh, and the, the fraction of sky observed and uh, several other things, but in particular, going to multi-frequency to uh, assess the, the SED, the spectral emission, emission density, uh, spectral energy density of the, of the foregrounds. So what are the foregrounds in, uh, in the large scale? As I said, they are the galaxy. So here you see the polarization SED uh, uh, for, uh, for, the, for, the, for the SMB in cyan, in green, the synchrotron, and in red, uh, the thermal dust. And so you see that the expected minimum for the foregrounds is around 70 and 100. But yeah, they are totally um, um, uh, dominant respect to the uh, energy density of CMB. Um, so you can either look, I mean, of course, all the, all the, most of the CMB experiments from the ground are looking on the regions where uh, the, I mean, the darkest regions in these two images in the right panel. So that are showing the, the synchrotron and the dust. But um, even that, I mean, it's, I mean, there is a, a small, albeit small, uh, but contribution for, for the, from the foreground. So that really need to be modeled and separated very well. Uh, at smaller angular scales, um, there are, um, I mean, similarly uh, with the, as, um, uh, the emissions that are in the Auragon galaxy, but essentially, is the emission coming from the extra external galaxy, the, the extra galactic sources. So essentially below 100 gigahertz, uh, we have synchrotron emission coming from uh, AGN or laser. And uh, so you see here in, uh, in the uh, left panels, uh, an, a map of a 2.3 gigahertz of intensity, a survey of a synchrotron. And you see every uh, star, and you see any dots that you see in this, in this map, is essentially a radio galaxy. Uh, we are far from the galactic plane, so there are no galactic uh, sources there. Um, and, uh, and also in polarization, you see, there are, there are less, but they, 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 there, are, there, are, uh, there are point sources. Instead, the, the long diffuse emission that you see there, it's, uh, the, from, it's going from red to blue, that's, that's the galaxy. So you see, uh, uh, this is in the bicep patch, in the bicep, the patch that had been observed uh, by, by bicep, of course, at different range of frequencies. We are here at 2.3 gigahertz. Well, I mean, um, at higher frequencies ab above, let's say, 200 gigahertz, there, is, there are star-forming galaxies. And so you see that this, every bright spot that you see there in, uh, in the right panel, those are uh, dusty galaxies that are, um, that are I mean, affecting uh, the, they are contaminating our measurements. Um, so, you, you start to see why. I mean, it's, it, start, it, it can it be interesting to paint non Gaussian signals. Um, so, the effect of these sources, of these extragalactic sources, is essentially directed at small angular scales in, uh, in the lensing signal. And you see here in the uh, uh, right bottom panels, you see the, the power spectra. These are measurements from on SPT pole, that is a South Pole Telescope, at, uh, so it's it aimed at uh, observe, observing um, smaller angular scales at a resolution of one arc minute. And, uh, and you see the, in, uh, in, uh, I mean, depending on the flux cut for the AGN or this dusty star-forming galaxies, you see how, um, 
what is the residual of these uh, undetected, on the undetected sources that are, uh, that are contaminating. Also in polarization, even though in polarization, dusty star forming galaxy never uh, have been detected in polarization so far. You see the, I mean, uh, yeah, the panels are 95 gigahertz and 150 gigahertz that are the two frequency channels. Okay, um, I think uh, this is a good point if you have any question to, uh, um, uh, I mean, this is just the introduction. Okay, I think, uh, yeah, so far so good. Okay, so why in painting, as I said, so the, the first thing is that we want to get rid of these point sources because uh, especially in the foreground monitor channels or in the, to, to, to drive uh, foreground templates, uh, in particular at high resolution, because, uh, and, and so we don't want the point sources, we want just the galactic emission. Um, so um, in, uh, as the sensitivity goes down, essentially uh, increases in, uh, for, for the um, future experiments, we expect that essentially more and more sources will be detected, not only in intensity, but also in uh, polarization. And, um, and so an aggressive masking is expected that, uh, to, to, to be applied for to our measurement. So this is, for instance, is a, ma a mask that we derived uh, for, for, um, for uh, Simon's Observatory. And uh, uh, Simon's Observatory is another uh, SMB experiment. It's in Atacama. It's going to be essentially uh, deployed in these moments. And, uh, and by 2021, the first light. But you see essentially that the, the it's very aggressive, the, 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 the masking. So in particular, if you want to assess higher order uh, function, I mean, correlations like uh, um, uh, three point functions or other higher orders, that's essentially, it's, it's gonna be a problem. Uh, so, um, so, so the solution today was to just further beam, uh, so further apply an extra smoothing to convolve, convolve our maps to a larger beam uh, with a full width at half maximum around one degrees to essentially remove and smear down the, the point sources. On the other end, I mean, Gaussian signal like CMB, they don't need much of a, um, an impainting with the neural networks because, I mean, already being a Gaussian field like uh, the CMB, uh, Gaussian constraint realization uh, can, can perform a very good, um, can do a, pretty much a good job. So deep convolutional neural networks have been adopted in the, in the past, I mean, so far actually, to impaint for image reconstruction in natural images. So the idea was to, well, I mean, if we are able to reconstruct a face or a landscape, why not, I mean, a Gaussian, a, a, a galactic field, a galactic emission. So this was the idea behind it. So we tried to impaint for the first time, actually, um, not only temperature, but also polarization of uh, foreground maps. And uh, we, in that paper, you see the, there is a comparison of three uh, methods. So it's essentially gradually, gradually going uh, from uh, um, not uh, uh, neural network approach toward a totally uh, neural network approach. And so uh, you see the first, the first method was uh, the nearest neighbor. So it's essentially, it's not based on neural networks, it's not trainable, and it's just filling the, the, the pixels inside the hole that we are masking. Uh, just with uh, uh, the nearest neighbor, um, uh, the nearest neighbor's value, the average, the average value of the nearest neighbors. The deep prior uh, instead is based on a series of uh, layers of convolutional neural networks, convolutional layers, but it's a not trainable approach. And um, it's interesting. We, we, I'm going to show you a few examples, but it's um, an architecture of the deep prior. But essentially, it's just um, um, start, start from a prior and go. Uh, and, uh, and iterates on, on that, on the same image. Um, the general active adversarial network was the last uh, method that we have used. And uh, the idea there, it's, you know, the, the, the generative adversarial networks, GAN, uh, shortly, it, they are, uh, um, it's the, the, this, this game of, of, of the of two um, uh, networks, essentially a generator and a discriminator. That, uh, and so essentially the, gay, the goal is to, the, 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 for the generator to fool uh, the discriminator, I mean, with these uh, with the generated maps. And so it's, uh, it's trainable and it's, uh, yeah, there are a few uh, the references. In particular, I mean, I, uh, 
among all several guns have been proposed so far, I mean, till, uh, since the, the first one uh, by Goodfellow and al. Uh, I'm using the, the, the one that is called uh, generative the gun with contextual attention. But yeah, let's go, um, so this is, let's go to the D prior. The D prior, it's a, it's a unit uh, um, network. Uh, so it, since it is a U-shaped network, and so, and it's made of two uh, branches, let's say, I mean, uh, connected uh, at the end with a, in the latent space with a fully connected layer. So one is the, uh, it's called the encoder uh, network. And essentially it given an input, uh, an input map that's corrupted. Uh, you see here uh, in, uh, in the left. So it, uh, it applies several layers of convolutional, uh, convolutional layer convolutions, I mean, that, I mean, in order to learn all the features outside the, outside the mask, outside essentially out, out, uh, in the uncorrupted part of the, of the map. And then from there, um, it, with the, in the decoder uh, branch, it tries to go back and for, I mean, re refill the, uh, refill the, um, the, the, the map essentially in the missing regions. So everything is done um, with a, um, essentially uh, starting from a prior Z, usually is a, uh, is a uniform, essentially you, you fill the values inside the, the, the hole uh, with a uniform distribution. Uh, of uh, random uh, sampled uh, numbers, and uh, and and then essentially you iterate um, with uh, by uh, with a gradient descent. So looking always at the very same image, and uh, and uh, at the, uh, essentially when the, the gradient descent converges, essentially you take that I mean, and learn the parameters. Uh, you use that for to in, to in paint at the end. I mean, you will just uh, uh, the, the gradient descent will converge when. Uh, Essentially, the the, the, the the painting is performed. So this is the prior. It's uh, I mean I really suggest you. I it was kind of new for me. It was usually uh, I'm used to uh, reason just training and then uh, training set and test set. But this was really an interesting uh, attempt uh, to paint. Um, yeah, the gun instead with the contextual attention, it's uh, it's um, essentially it's a usual gun, but it's uh, um, you see here in this plot, this was uh, essentially uh, coming from the U et al uh, reference that I told you. There are two regions, two two um, two parts of this network. One network that is called the uh, coarse network. And it's essentially an encoder decoder network. <clears throat> uh, essentially, gives uh, reads the, the raw image and so and uh, uncorrupted with the, the corrupted one plus a mask. Uh, so that is uh, uh, zero where there are the missing pixels. And then essentially, uh, the first uh, um, encoder decoder network will give us uh, the result. Will give us a result of coarse um, uh, filling, uh, coarse in painting. <coughs> uh, uh, so and, and this is expected. This this uh, um, the, the the unit, the encoder decoder networks. The, these these networks uh, are expected to paint with blurry images. So it's something that we um, it's it's expected. But the interesting part is that now the, the you know, so so the, the the whole generator has also not only a coarse network but also. Um, uh, a, a refinement network, and the refinement network works that essentially. Um, so there, there are two layers. One one layer that is called the contextual attention, and so we look at the global features in the map. Uh, so in the, to gen, to regenerate to generate it better to refine better the, the in painting in painted regions, and uh, and the deleted I need a deleted convolution that will uh, essentially aim at refine the the pixel inside the region. So it's going to be local inside the. Uh, missing part. And so you see, for instance, uh, uh, the attention map. You can actually also um, uh, derive, a, a vi visualize uh, the uh, attention map. And so you see, for instance, for this particular case of this road with, uh, um, with grass in, uh, in the borders, you see that the, the contextual attention layer looked mostly at the, uh, of, of, at the, at the global feature, looked at the uh, lower right corner of the feature. So to essentially, um, and you see because the, 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 if you look at the color coding, you'll see these, uh, um, the pixels inside the, you see the, the pixel inside the, the, in the mixing area, which that have been filled 
by, by visualizing which area in, uh, in the map. And then essentially, yeah, there is the discriminator uh, that is a global, uh, so that is a critic and, uh, and, uh, and is the idea usually. The discriminator will uh, uh, try to distinguish between the generated and the, um, and the uh, real, the ground truth images. Okay, I think these are uh, the, the, I think those are the, the, the yeah, the, the, the details for, for the networks. So uh, the training set, so if you think about it, is just used for, for the gun, for the gun, uh, for twin painting with gun. And uh, so we um, <coughs> generated two maps, uh, one, uh, I mean, so two training set. One will be training on dust temper, on dust T, Q and U. Q and U are quantities related to, uh, to the linear polarization. So they are the stocks parameters. And so there are Q and U maps are uh, polarization maps. And, uh, and one, it was for, for the dust at 353 gigahertz, because uh, I mean, this is one of the highest frequency channels from Planck, so we can use them uh, for, uh, I mean, from, but we used, we used to twin paint, but we used just the simulated uh, maps, um, simulated maps with the PySM code. So the resolution is five arc minutes. And for synchrotron, we used uh, PySM, still synchrotron emission uh, at 2.3 gigahertz. And so the, and the resolution is, is uh, essentially comparable with the SPAS map, so 10 arc minutes. So at the end up, we selected um, random crops, uh, three by three uh, degrees sizes, 15,000 patches at the end, and we masked uh, three times the beam. So the, the size of the mask is gonna be, usually it's uh, uh, three uh, times the, the, the beam size. So, it's uh, it's large actually, you know, for, for especially for synchrotron, it could be half a degree. Um, yeah, I think uh, I was thinking another thing. Yeah, or, or usually the, 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 for all this for all the cases we used, uh, um, so we assumed that the source, the point, this point source, the extra galactic source was at the center of this uh, of this hole, and uh, and that uh, uh, the shape of this hole it's usual uh, spherical, circular, circle essentially. And um, yeah, so and again, train and again have been trained separately on dust and synchrotron, and we deliver the weights, the training weights, uh, both uh, separately for dust and synchrotron. So that if you want, you want to use for dust, you can use just in painting for dust and not for synchrotron. We didn't want, I mean, the features are kind of different, so it's better to disentangle them. Okay, so the idea uh, is expected for training is that you know the ground truth, that is the output target, why? And so you try to generate uh, this, um, to train your network to, uh, from the corrupted uh, the images, the input features, I mean, to generate the output target. Uh, it's, this is the uh, usual approach for training. Uh, the test set is about 500 patches, and we will use them to essentially see, uh, evaluate the results. Okay, here you see, uh, uh, there are several uh, crops in different uh, coordinates. You see the coordinates uh, in, are in galactic, galactic coordinates, uh, longitude, galactic longitude, and galactic latitude. And it's the, uh, you see these uh, the values are in the first column. Um, uh, and this is the ground truth. So the circle that you see uh, in the black circle is the impainted area. And then you see uh, from left to right, you see the nearest neighbor approach that is, uh, as, expe as expected, will uh, impaint uh, just uh, with the smoother, smooth features because it's essentially propagating the average from the nearest neighbors. And then the deep prior and GAN are in the toward the right. So you see here Q, U, and temperature maps for going from, uh, um, from uh, top to, to the bottom panels. Um, yeah, as you, as you see, um, GAN is really, and both GAN and Deep Prior uh, are really, I mean, uh, doing some very interesting job in, reconstru in the reconstruction. In particular, in Synchrotron, that is the uh, right column uh, panel of this, of this plot in these slides, you see that there are uh, also, somehow they try to reconstruct also the um, grid like X and plus, uh, so essentially vertical, and uh, horizontal or also uh, diagonal structures that are typical of Q and U patterns. So, and so essentially this means that the, the, is a, I mean, by eye, you actually, you can distinguish which one is the, um, I mean, which one is the uh, impainted one and, and the ground truth. I mean, for gun and, and the prior, of course. 
um, yeah. So how to evaluate the pixel distribution? This was really tough. I mean, because uh, it's um, um, to to evaluate to find a way to um, essentially to re uh, to express what the eyes uh, our eyes see. Right. I mean, so we found. I mean, just at the end, uh, using uh, three evaluation metrics from um, from the uh, literature. One uh, is the pixel distribution. So it's just the zero order uh, or the the, the one-point correlation function, so essentially just the histogram of all the images of the in the test set rescaled between minus one and one. And you see here, uh, those are um, in uh, the, from the test set, the, the histogram of the test set is in uh, black. You don't much see it because you see that they are overlapping with, uh, with the impainted cases. So you see here, you see in nearest neighbors, the prior, in Engan, respectively in blue diamonds, uh, and orange stars, and uh, green circles. And, uh, but you cannot see some um, displacement um, in, uh, in, in the deep prior, but it's essentially, if you perform a Kolmogorov's beam of steps to see whether the two samples, the, 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 the ground truth one in the test set and the impainted one, respect, I mean, uh, depending whether nearest neighbor, the prior or can, essentially all of the uh, case tests with those these those sets uh, passed. I mean, with the uh, I mean with the five with the uh, two sigma confidence level. So it was I mean essentially an indication that they are, I mean they come I mean they, they from the same distribution. Uh, in, we evaluated the power spectra. We used the Namaster and uh, uh, we on the on the patch. And in, in each crop, and you see here um, the, the, the dotted lines are showing the a median of all the test set. The, the black dotted lines are the median of all, this, all the, the, the test set, and the, the 95 percentage confidence, uh, the, the central interval of uh, of this uh, of the test set, are shown as a shaded area in gray. Um, in uh, Similarly to, uh, to the same uh, co convention in uh, the previous plot, so you see here the median of the, uh, for the deep prior gun and nearest neighbors, um, and, uh, and the, the, the dashed lines with the colors, uh, I mean, with the same colors, uh, refers to the, um, to the 95% per confidence central interval of, uh, of, um, of, of, of the impainted uh, sets. So you see that they are essentially um, uh, re, uh, mimicking the, 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 the overall uh, distribution of the power spectra. This is actually the fact that you see that they, the, the power spectra range about two orders of magnitude. This that because um, um, you you are observe, you are cropping patches at different a, a regions in the sky, and uh, where the, the dust emission ranges actually as much as. Uh, uh, for uh, could be, I mean, four or uh, about uh, one order of magnitude. That is essentially uh, two orders of magnitude in the power spectra. Um, this is the same. Also, you see here um, in the in the top panel is the is the is, is dust emission, whereas you see here in um, in the bottom panel is the synchrotron emission. Um, yeah. I mean, there are a few displacements at the end. I mean, uh, the, 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 I mean the, the nearest neighbor departs a bit, especially in E and B modes for dust uh, at a higher L. So this is something that we are uh, trying to investigate. I think a better tuning for the deep prior uh, will be needed, in particular, I mean, in the, um, the, the, the size of the filters. That's my idea. But yeah, I mean, so far so good. You can also evaluate the Minkowski functionals. I don't know if you are familiar with them, but these are the Minkowski functionals are uh, um, an evaluation. You just uh, assume, um, evaluate um, the area and uh, the, the, the connectivity and the, um, in the perimeter uh, of the image that are scaled between a certain, uh, in, uh, within a certain range. And then, uh, um, uh, as a function of this threshold, you evaluate, I mean, essentially, these, uh, the three Minkowski functionals that refers, as I said, to the area, uh, to the uh, perimeter, and to the, um, and to the connectivity. Um, it's interesting because you see here V0, V1, and V2 refers to these uh, three quantities, and, and, uh, and, and you see that essentially they are uh, um, uh, showing the same, uh, the same behavior as. Uh, 
um, as uh, as before. I mean, so they track the the they track the test set uh, pretty much. The median is uh, really banged on, though. I mean, uh, the deep prior try tends to depart not only in the median uh, in the median side, but also in the uh, the, the, the central uh, the central intervals. Um, and this is also an indication that maybe this is uh, uh, something that maybe it's, it needs to be understood. But in this, in the, in the, on the other end, uh, GAN, it's, uh, it's working pretty well. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think uh, yeah, I, I don't know how much I have I have still left, but... None. Um, <laughs> none? Yeah, go to the conclusion. Okay. Yeah, okay, perfect, sorry, yeah. So you see that uh, this is the um, this is the approach. I mean, the, the, we can also try um, on simulated on uh, on, uh, on noisy maps like Planck, and we have um, um, the, the results are kind of uh, consistent. The GAN are working pretty well, uh, so this, there is no effect. Uh, the noise doesn't affect uh, the results. Uh, yeah, in the end we end up in painting also an asynchrotron map, the ESPAS map. And you see the results are here, and um, the power spectrum. Um, it's of course is uh, um, it's uh, it's um, the, 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 there is uh, we we also observe the uh, decrease in power in uh, in the gun, and this is expected because you are you're masking also the undetected sources, so you are mitigating this effect. But yeah, so at the end uh, we are able to. Um, we I delivered this package in, into a Python package. It's called Picasso. You can find it in GitHub, and um, yeah, and we applied these uh, in painters also in, uh, to a real lab application. So, so and for two sparse maps. Yeah, that's it. Sorry, I was long. Oh, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you a lot. No problem. Uh, so, questions. Um, I have one question. Mm -hmm. First, thanks for your talk. It was very interesting. Um, maybe you are not aware, but uh, our group has been clearly a pioneer in using in painting techniques for CMB data, and we were using it for uh, for Planck, and uh, so it was mainly based on sparsity. It was not a neural network, and so we, we were using uh, these techniques for. Uh, all the channels of Planck. So it was not the first time that uh, in-painting uh, ah. has been used for... Um, so the... Okay. So those were just a comment. Uh, um, so we have developed this in-painting technique, but at the end, we find out that uh, there was other way to remove point sources. And, um, and especially without having to in-paint uh, the data. Uh, the 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 problem we found in uh, masking the, the the point sources is we have to to be quite uh, very conservative in order to not have any artifacts due to point sources, and you may have mm -hmm. to ask to mask a lot in fact the data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, sorry if you know where are the point sources, you you may be able to remove them without uh, masking the data. And it may be, even be possible that a neural network uh, would be a, a good way to do this job as well. Yeah, uh, you mean, uh, but you need to assume, uh, you need to know pretty well the, 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 the beam of your experiment, right? Okay, uh, not necessary. Uh, we have developed different tools. One was using really the beam of the point source, which I assume normally you have an idea what it is. But I guess that neural network could really, uh, you could learn exactly uh, uh, mm -hmm. the simulation, what was uh, the input, what was the output, and you could learn to subtract the beam rather than learning how to in-paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, that, that's the beam, the convolution is something that is, uh, yeah, it, 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 can, it can be done, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you mean that this this could be used instead of uh, just masking? Yeah, beam removal. That, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, indeed, the, the, this was a sort of a test case because the idea is to use the gun, the gun to to deliver to to go to higher um, to high uh, resolution templates for foregrounds. So that's that's what I'm working on right now. And actually, it's uh, um, 
and uh, and it's it has been shown that is uh, I mean it looks that is working I mean and it does not perform the the beam the convolution so but yeah I totally agree with you yeah that's right I and mean, you can uh, just uh, use that I haven't I haven't thought about that but yeah you're right thank you Axel yeah I have also a question uh, because I'm a bit confused uh, when you're using painting in the situation because you explained at the beginning that the mask is a problem for correlation functions and when you do in painting you're not adding any more any information to the data that you have and sometimes you could even create some false correlation that could bias the final results so isn't it a bit risky to do it this way and could it be possible to I don't know, instead of in paint, directly compute the correlation function uh, in another way to avoid the masking problem? Um, so, yeah, I mean, um, so the only, the only way, I mean, if you have a better suggestion, but the, the, the only way that I found out to, to maintain the, the, the summary statistics for all the, I mean, in the patch was to use the, these, uh, three, these three evaluations. So to evaluate the pixel values, the, 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 point, the, the power spectrum, and the Minkowski functionals. In particular, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, we, I wanted, I mean, indeed, I mean, I, I was not really concerned, I mean, for um, the high order uh, statistics, in part, because, I mean, they usually those are in the, the frequency channels, so they are not, you don't use much of them for, uh, I mean, uh, to, uh, to high frequency for, to, for the foreground monitor channels. It's just, I mean, so my, my goal was to um, try to go uh, at high, to, to, to produce, I mean, to, to, to generate maps uh, that can be used, I mean, with Ghana, can, I mean, paint maps that can be used uh, as a for, I mean, for foreground templates without the point sources. You know, for instance, uh, by SM, there is, I mean, it's, uh, it comes from the template of uh, uh, Commander Map from Planck. 353 gigahertz and uh, but there are there are sources there are cib sources uh, in that template so and uh, for instance what we can do that we can can we improve the template i mean given we don't have another uh, a better foreground monitor so far i mean we need another uh, light and another, another satellite for uh, so th this is the, the, the it's just to rely on what we have in the data and uh, try to improve that and uh, have you tried to learn the signal of the point sources so instead of removing data trying to just hide what uh, is causing the problem no i haven't that's a good idea mm -mm. yeah good point other questions have you been talking with Marius Miller also at berkeley yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, because so he has this tool where um, he learns a prior for the various maps and then he can sample through the entire posterior. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I'm curious which approach actually works the best. Uh, I, I think there is no, you think, uh, uh, I mean, I, I, we, we interacted a lot with him. I, I, in particular, what we uh, ended up uh, was that it would be useful to, if I can give you, I can give him a prior uh, on the dust on the foreground, for instance. And uh, I mean, that, I, that, is, that has been learned somehow. I don't know whether we did work or with another one. But yeah, this is something that we are, uh, uh, we meet regularly on a weekly basis, uh, SMB groups in uh, Berkeley. And so, yeah, I, it's something that is, yeah, we are we are discussing. If this is a, <laughs> if this was a suggestion, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, could be thought. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Other comments or questions? Well, if not, let's thank that again. Thank you, guys. Thanks yeah. a lot for being here. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much.